Welcome friends of the Corporate Art Gallery to Cork City on Culture Night. We're standing up here on the top of Shandon Street, probably one of the oldest parts districts of Cork City dating right back to the 13th century. Um, I've got Firkin Crane in front of me, Water Museum to my left, and behind me here we're standing at the Shandon Art Studio. We've just had a look inside and we've had a fantastic chat with Karina and Susan um, inside and they're telling us about the project that they have going on here behind us. It's the Shandon Urban Orienteering Drawing Competition. And basically, it's a competition open to everybody, and it's the design of a tile, and there's going to be five tiles produced, and they are going to be permanently placed around the city. And you can find out more information on that on the Cork City um, website. So, we've had a look at some of the fabric ceramics and the sewing that's going on, and there are classes here children, teenagers, all through the evening and they've a fantastic use of the space. It just seems the building kept going back and back and back and when we went inside and what's going on there is absolutely amazing. Well worth checking out. Nothing like getting your hands dirty here on I culture so. night. I think, I think so, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Busy out. There's something very therapeutic about working. There is, there is, look. Have you, are you part of the project? Have you done this? Uh, we're from the Shandon area, we're the Tidy Towns Committee. So we've headed downtown and we're now on around the St. Peter's Church at this wonderful exhibition. And it's called Court uh, Government and Burning of a Picture. We met with um, Christine, who manages operations here, and she was really inviting and welcoming to the friends of Crawford, and they said that she understands that people aren't getting into the exhibition, and that they're more than happy to work with us on opening special hours, so that the friends can come in and see this exhibition for themselves. So we're here in St. Peter's Church at a fabulous exhibition called The Burning of the City. And it's running right through next year. And I'm here with Casey, and we're standing in front of the fabulous painting of the Towns of Sweden. So I want to ask Casey, could you guys say that? Yeah, of course. So this is painted by Jeanette Collins, who's actually a regular who comes in St. Peter's quite often, and she's a local court woman. She was commissioned to paint this painting of Muriel because Muriel was, after Terence died, she was also very heartbroken, um, but she was a true rebel, basically. And absolutely, she fought, the way I look at it is that Terence and Muriel were a unit, they weren't, that she wasn't seen as just a woman at the time, which would have been quite normal. She was very much in it with him for her own reasons that she went away to New York and she went to New York and she, she campaigned for getting help for us out here and getting help for after her parents had died on hunger strike in Brixton mm -hmm. and riots had started so she went over there and riots started then in America as well she brought attention to it and um, so this meeting was done for uh, International Women's Day which was going to be gifted to the Lord Mayor in New York and it's going to be hung in City Hall but obviously in the case because the case of coronavirus <laughs> what, what are the benefits of coronavirus yeah. we have to keep it here we have to keep it here exactly but uh, it was meant to be a gift because Muriel was actually the first woman in New York to get the freedom of New York which is great. Um, so we have our own court woman is actually the first one to get the freedom of New York. Yeah. Thank you, Lucy. No problem. So this is what the people of the court would walk out to on the 12th of December, but it's turned to every 20. Now we've had a talk with Jerry White telling us all about the ice and what led up to them. And we were looking forward to a lecture by Dagmar O'Rean telling us what happened with the city afterwards and the rebuilding of the city. So hopefully um, we'll be able to give you some talk from Jaguar at some stage in the future and this is just an exhibition here that will just keep us our appetites wet until then. Okay, we're standing now in Triscoll Art Centre and we're very excited this evening because there's an exhibition going on here behind me with the work of Stephen Doyle and Stephen we've already seen his one of his works, Dylan and Sanandum, hanging on the walls of the Crawford Art Gallery. 
as part of the Zurich Portrait Prize that was host, we had to host last year. So this is his exhibition called Numb. So it's a continuation of his exploration of gender identity. So we're going to head inside now and we're going to see what his work has evolved into now. This is a wonderful exhibition um, of Stephen's here called Numb and it's after he um, graduated from Crawford College of Art and Design in 2017 and he spent some time in Shanghai on residency after that. And this is uh, Stephen's exploration of the Chinese LGBTQ plus society and issues that they may experience with um, isolation, with discrimination. So it's a wonderful um, exhibition and his technique is absolutely amazing, his colour and line. And we're very lucky in the Crawford Art Gallery to have one of Stephen's pieces, still in the sound of, in the permanent collection there. So you might pop in there now in a little bit and just have a look at it because it's hanging on. told us that there's a wonderful exhibition on here with some of the works of one of our members, um, Angie Shanahan. So we're here at Nash 19 and we're going to pop inside, not for a cuppa, but just to check out some of Angie's fabulous work. So we're inside Nash 19 at this wonderful exhibition called Memory Edit. We're here next to one of Angie Shanahan's pieces, and this is a fabulous painting. It's a crimp on canvas, and it's called Many Ingenious Lovely Things Are Gone. This is here in the exhibition, um, and she's based in the Backwater Artists um, Studio on Watsford Key. Um, next to Angie's work, there is some work here by Roshi O'Sullivan, and it's mostly oil on fiber. And this lovely piece here is called Shell and it's acrylic on canvas and this is more of Angie's work which is here on view in Nash 19. There you go, you're looking important. That's more like it Michael, well done. So we've had the legs walked off us this evening. We really enjoyed it by Seth Bernadette and we're decided we're going to end the night on a really high note. So where else would we be on the side of the grounds of proper? And of course we were delighted because like yourselves, we haven't seen Mike Baldwin in so long that he was here <laughs> and we're after grabbing him. So um, Mike, we, we've come down to see a couple of things actually. We've heard about Conal and about his portrait hanging again and We've also been around this evening looking at Stephen Doyle's work and we're very excited to see that. Um, could you just point us in the direction of a few highlights that we should be looking for over inside the gallery this evening? Oh, well, oh. <laughs> it's really a treasure trove, as, as, as we all know. Um, I think probably, I mean, just soaking up the building again is just a joy because, you know, we get we work from home usually. So it's a joy for me to even go in. Um, but I think one of the real highlights for me at the moment is what we've started to do with the collection. Um, so we have our exhibition Statio Bene that looks yes. at the harbour yeah. and the history of it. So there's some real gems in there that we haven't seen in a long time um, and might surprise us and like bring back a memory of of our own experience of the harbour. Yes. And then also um, we have an exhibition called Lucid Abnormalities, which um, speaks to this time of strangeness. And there's gorgeous work by Alice Maher and um, Patrick Scott and Mary Swansea and Huey O'Donoghue. Um, and then of course the temporary exhibitions in transit, um, which has been so successful. And the new exhibition uh, called Expulsion, um, which is a uh, uh, contemporary artist, Kevin Gaffney, who worked with us on this project. Um, and it follows last year's The Ocean Between by Marianne oh, yes. 
Yes, we touched off that actually. We were in St. Elizabeth's Port and uh, brought back memories of the ocean between and the whole history of it being the uh, holding self of women before they went to New South Wales and the stories behind all of that. So, so it's great. You, you've really wet our appetites, Mike. <laughs> we're going to head inside now. Thanks a million for your that, time. That, that's a good plan. And we've come in to see. Uh, Eileen's portrait of Colonel Creepy. But I believe we may even get a glimpse of the man in the flesh while we're here. Come on and we're going to walk around and see. She's really worked to get the opportunity to just Google her name because her stuff, her, her portraits are. Are you asking who this portrait is? No, you asked who I want to work out. My lord, these three are the ugly. That's me, Father Matthew, and this is the ugly one as well as the same. Do you want me to say Father Matthew? Absolutely. Is he really going to press me? I'm going to be proud of him. I'm sure he's going to be proud of him too. So the thing is, here's the mad thing. It's just a quirky story. The thing is, I use this portrait in the cover of a book, and it was a book of three small plays that really, they were down in the Opera House, they were down in the Palace, and that was about it. But so we launched the book on the night that Crawford unveiled this, right? Yeah. And it just happened that a man called Michael Melanfi came along, I haven't really met him since, and he bought two copies, and he, he sent one copy to his son, who works in a bar in New York, yeah. and then his son wrote back to me and said, look, you're Mr. Creed, and I thought it was my father, I remember, right? What? This is a dear Mr. Creed, do you mind if you play out in the bar? There was like 40 seats, elastic seats. I said, absolutely right. And it just happened that um, the New York Times write in. They were in the pub one day, some guy went upstairs and he gave a huge review. And the following week, uh, the following year, the Irish Rep took two of them, yeah. two of the plays, right? And the mad thing is, I happened to be the way things worked out in China when they were on the Irish Rep. And they read the New York Times that they're really the echo because it's, it's the world of KDK, right? And they said, geez, that's your man, they're writing about here, right? So, China, three plays went to China. And then one of these goes up to New York Times every year since then, right? And the reason being, because that painting, because otherwise the book wouldn't be launched, because it matched that painting, you know, right? Oh, yeah. and, uh, and it was just one of those perky ducks, perky uh, sort of strokes of the bay thing. And, what I like about it is that often in the arts, people assume that it's done through, you know, the industry and done through, you know, agents mm -hmm. and companies and commissions and all that, and often it doesn't. I think that's what's really nice about that story. And if the Crawford had bought, and I actually would like the painting of the rabbit, yeah. if they bought the painting of the rabbit, yeah. none of that would happen to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it would be, you know, that, that is. So we hope you've enjoyed this wonderful evening of culture in Cork City and um, we were delighted to be able to meet with Conan and for him to be able to express to the friends how much he appreciated the start they gave them by purchasing his artwork and where it led to with his plays being produced in New York. So um, we also were thrilled that we were able to talk with Michael Waldron and we're going to hear more from Michael on Stachio Bene in our autumn lecture series, which will go online shortly. So watch this space. <laughs>